Hi everyone, uh, I'm Ashwara Sandeep and welcome to another episode of Law School Uncensored. So in today's video, we are going to talk about uh, different mistakes that have been made by law students. Now, I was also a law student around uh, 15 years ago right now. But then trust me, those were the best days of my life. I'm not exaggerating. I've had, uh, you know, I've done my three years law. Uh, that is after my graduation but you know how much I didn't enjoy my life in graduation I enjoyed more in law school so what was so special about my law school that uh, you know it's more memorable one when I was uh, you know when I was doing my LLB I was already working after my graduation I did my uh, bachelor's in mass media so I was already working as a content uh, writer for a business website uh, that was my second job and trust me that's, that was one of my worst jobs. I never mentioned it in my CV because uh, the trauma or the memory is so bad. I don't want to recall it. Yes, even people like us have bad memories. Uh, after that, uh, you know, in my first semester itself, I started my internship. So I was working right through all three years or all my six semesters of LLB. But despite that, uh, I did not miss a single opportunity to enjoy life or to, you know, take part in any activity. Uh, going back, I really wish there were certain things somebody told me then. Uh, but it's okay now, I don't have a time machine that I can go back and, uh, you know, undo certain things. So here are a few mistakes that I see law students are making tremendously and which they deliver, uh, they you know definitely have to set it right, right away, like there is no option. Because things have definitely changed in the last 15 years when we were working, we were getting into the field, everything was just getting digitized. So you know the requirement of interns was still there. Today almost you know 60 to 70 percent of the field is digitized so slowly and steadily the requirement of interns is also reducing or rather i would like to put it that we need interns who can handle uh, you know the digital uh, media or the technology well so the mindset that we had around 15 years is definitely not going to work today Having said that, one common mistake that I see a lot of law students making is not giving importance to your academics. They think that uh, academics is something that you learn only to clear, uh, clear your exams. But uh, that is not true. Academics is something that is important to you irrespective. Because until and unless you don't know the theory about contract until and unless you don't know what are the pointers that you don't you know that makes a contract invalid or you don't know the technicality of who owns the copyright under the copyright agreement how are you going to draft a copyright agreement so you don't need to learn the skill set see even when you're applying for an internship the first thing that you need to know is how to take out a ratio or at least you need to be aware, the minimum aware that you know there is a judgment, there are different types of courts and this is what happens in different types of courts, these are the jurisdictions. These are the basic set of pointers which you have to learn. You can learn these from your college, you can learn these from different uh, sessions that are conducted, uh, you can check with your teachers, you can check with your seniors etc. But then not paying attention to your academics is something that is non-negotiable. I see a lot of students who just, uh, you know, use guides to mug up and clear the exams. Assignments also, I mean, uh, I have this website and even for assignments, I see a lot of students who are approaching me and saying, Ki, just give me notes or, you know, just get this assignment done for me, I'm ready to pay you. The idea behind giving law students an assignment to do is so that you understand the law, you understand its application. If at this young age you are not in a position to, you know, understand the subject, absorb it, 
think about it, think about its applicability, then I'm very sorry to say you're not fit to be in this field. Because tomorrow, when you're going to be a practical, uh, practicing lawyer, there are a lot of challenges that are going to come in front of you. You have to accept them. And as lawyers, remember, your job is to find solution for others, not to find more problems for your clients. So please pay attention to your academics in a very serious manner and then proceed ahead. If you are incapable, I don't think if anybody has got admission in law school, they are that incapable that they cannot even complete a 10-page assignment on their own. If you are unable to do it, I am very sorry to say, please quit law school. I know this message is harsh, but then you know some people need to be told the reality in a very harsh manner. Uh, you know, simultaneously, the other thing I see is students not reading. They don't understand the difference between what is a bear act, what is a commentary, or what is an AIR manual, or what is a legal journal, or what is a blog, etc. Now, uh, at least in my college, that was a practice. Uh, in the first six months, within the first six months, there would be something called as a library visit for all the students. Majority of the students I have interacted with do not know what a college library is or where it is or they say we don't have an access or we never just bother to go there. A library is a place that is heaven for law students and you should spend at least two, two hours minimum. Go before college, you know, just hang out in your break time, just browse through the books. I'm not telling you to read, just browse through the books, just open any random book and read any two pages. The mark may kuch nahi jayega. You may not even understand the concept. But then develop this habit of reading any scrap of paper. That is the most important tip for every law student. Because if you don't develop the habit of reading, no matter what AI, what chat GPT you have, ultimately, until and unless manually you don't check a particular document, you won't be able to find a solution. The client will land up on your doorstep at 10 p.m. and say that, Sir, kal subay ye case file karna hai. How are you going to browse through hundreds of papers, hundreds of, you know, documents? Because client may just, you know, reach your house with a car full of documents. You have to sort it out overnight. In order to, you know, develop that skill, it is very important that you have the habit of reading for a minimum of two hours. Okay, if you don't get time to read, the best thing what I do even now is read when you're eating. I know distractive feeding is something that everybody is against, but then I had this habit. I picked up this habit from my cousin sister. But then I do have this habit of reading a book, reading something hard copy while uh, having my food. That is the least you can do. Because upgrading yourself and upskilling yourself is something that is very important. The other mistake that I see, uh, it's not a mistake rather, or uh, for me it was more of a culture shock. The way certain students spoke. And uh, now I come from a traditional South Indian family. Uh, I'm born and raised in Bombay. So you know there's a particular way. We are all too polished to, uh, we are just polished that is what I can say and it is something that is natural for us but then I come across some students and you know talking to them was a real culture shock because prima facie they were not rude actually it's just the way they spoke or it's you know just pretty normal for them to talk and this I observed in a lot of students so if you want to work in corporate if you are someone who is looking forward to move to a metropolitan city you have to work on your interpersonal skills you have to work on your personal communication you cannot be rude when i speak, say about you have to be polished it doesn't mean you have to speak shashi tarur english but you have to have your basic grammar correct you need to know which words to use where which sentence to use where for example, you cannot send a WhatsApp and end your sentence with a question mark of, or an apostrophe. That is sheer rudeness. That is absolutely rude. For me, 
आई वुड कंसिडर कि ये कैसे गवार ने मुझे एक मैसेज किया है to be very honest that is what comes into my mind until and unless you are not someone who is very friendly or uh, you are not my 3 am friend that is not how you would send anybody a message so differentiate between sending a professional message and a personal message these are very small things but they speak volumes about your personality and this is one place where everybody almost 90% of the kids are going wrong after that uh, the most important thing is not participating in competitions uh, participating in competitions is optional but i would encourage you to participate because you may not win but the experience that you gain you know the mindset that it opens for you is amazing we did not spare a single competition whether it was local national international humne to sab mein participate kiya and we were free to experiment it was not always related to law related we would participate in art and craft we would participate in whatever competitions that uh, uh, came into our college whether it was video making whether it was fashion shows we never stayed back we never held ourselves back so participate in competitions if you want overall development if your college doesn't allow you to participate then i'm very sure you have access to the internet and there are a lot of competitions these days which are held online so that's what i said you know 15 years ago you gave me an excuse that college allow me karta participate in participation mein i would have accepted it but today when you tell me my college is not allowing me to participate i won't accept it because today you have the internet if you are here watching this video it definitely means you have access to basic internet to understand where you can get details of these competitions okay then the most important thing is lack of practical experience now practical experience doesn't mean that you have to work in a tier 1 law firm lack of practical experience means you have to work with an organization wherein you learn by observation now remember that uh, even when you do your internships it is not always that someone will come and teach you nobody is going to hand hold and teach you anything you have to learn by observation if your senior is asking you to go through a document it is if a file is given to you check with your senior can i open this document yes read it you understanding or not is not the purpose right now. but just browse through it he is not allowing you to read the document papers of the case uh, papers of the case it's okay can you read that bare act okay yes read the bare act nahi hota hai courts ke bahar boards hote hain boards are the sequence of cases that have been listed for that day read the board read the notices that are circulated or that are post uh, you know pasted outside talk to lawyers sitting in the court a lot of times i see that law, law students say that mujhse kuch nahi karwaya mujhe sirf court mein baitha ke rakha i didn't gain any experience so in every experience whether good bad or ugly even the worst job experience that i am talking about i learned a lot okay whatever happened was a different thing but i learned a lot so irrespective of wherever you get an opportunity you have to learn a lot and you learn all this by observing nobody is going to teach you certain things okay the other thing is don't get overwhelmed by what you see on social media or by what your relatives say now remember everybody has different circumstances everybody has uh, different opportunities someone is already born and brought up in a certain place in a certain family you can't change up anything about it. count your blessings be thankful to your parents be thankful to the family be thankful to your support system and make the best out of it a lot of messages i get on social media um, it just begins with uh, ma'am i am a first generation lawyer i don't know anything about this field can you guide me i would say that this is a very wrong method 
of approaching someone. Even I am a first generation lawyer, but I never approached anyone like this. Rather, I would say that, uh, sir or ma'am, I am a law student so in, from so and so college. Uh, you know, these uh, I don't have any experience in this particular field. Can you please guide me? This is what I am looking for. Now, you being a first generation lawyer is not the problem of the front person. Don't expect people to give you work out of sympathy. Because if that is the condition, then sorry to say, but you will never prosper in life. If you want to break that stereotype, if you want to break that notion, if you want to break that glass ceiling, you have to accept your circumstances and then move ahead. You know, there are a lot of perks about being a first generation lawyer. The best part is there is nobody your family members can compare you with. Because a second generation lawyer, no matter how good they are, they will always be compared with the previous generation. And trust me, as much as you cannot afford a mistake, even they cannot afford a mistake. Right? So, everybody has their own set of challenges. It is just that certain things look very cozy, certain things do not look very cozy. It's upon you whether you want to take charge of the situation and move ahead or you want to keep on cribbing and wait for some fairy godmother to come and solve the problem. Okay. The other thing is that, uh, you know, most of the times when we are in law school, we are around 17 to 20 to 20. This age is very complicated because a lot of things are happening. Some of us are graduating, some of our friends have already got their job, they have got a good package, some of them are moving abroad for their uh, post-graduation, some are getting married and uh, you know, some are getting settled, blah, 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 a lot of things are happening. So we are so lost in everything that we forgot one basic thing, that is ourselves. So take care of yourself, ensure that you give utmost importance to physical, uh, uh, physical activity, ensure fitness is a part of your routine. The reason I'm saying this is because, uh, as I mentioned, I was doing my internship, I was uh, 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 doing my three years LLB and everything took a toll on me. It took such a bad toll on my health that I couldn't practice technically with that firm for more than two years because my schedule was quite hectic. So don't ignore your health, don't ignore your hobby. Ensure every weekend that you spend at least one hour only for that hobby. Whether it is playing cricket, whether it is drawing, learning a new musical instrument, writing, making videos, dancing, singing, whatever it is. Okay, just cherish your hobby. And it's okay to make mistakes. Even if you have made mistakes, it's perfectly alright. We are all human beings and we are bound to make mistakes. Even I made a quite a few mistakes, um, like uh, a lot of these examples are from, you know, my experience. Now, one mistake I can say is that uh, when you spoke about, when I just spoke about interpersonal communication, uh, I'm an introvert. Even today, if given an opportunity, I'll run away from a place. I hate being in a crowded place. I'm horrible at networking. Even though I keep talking a lot about networking, networking is horrible at it. Okay, so let's be honest. So, yeah, so we all do make mistakes and we hope to rectify the same. I don't have a time machine to rectify my mistakes in the past, so I'm just sharing it with you so that you don't commit them in the future. So, I hope this was a great session and you guys enjoyed a lot. I'm looking forward to meet you all in the next session. Thank you so much.